Now in this uh, question number 12 as it reads that dependence of intensity of gravitational field capital E of earth with distance r from center of the earth is correctly represented by and you have been given four graphs. Now you see this is a very straightforward question. Gravitational field means the acceleration due to gravity in vector form. We know that inside the earth g is directly proportional to r but outside it is proportional to 1 by r square. Not only that, since the force is attractive, that's why the field is also plotted on the lower side. Lower side means on negative side. So you have to see that up to the radius of the earth, it should be a straight line. And then after that, 1 by r square variation. So most appropriate answer for this particular thing will be first option. This is a direct question. So now let us discuss uh, next question, that is question number 13. Now let us discuss the next question that is question 13. It reads that uh, copper of fixed volume V is drawn into wire of length L. When this wire is subjected to a constant force F, the extension produced in the wire is delta L. So try to see this is a question of mechanical properties of solids in which Young's modulus of elasticity will be used. So they are demanding which of the following graphs. However, the graph is not given. They have said that if say delta L versus 1 by L is plotted then will it be a straight line and so on. So they are demanding which of the following graphs will be a straight line. That means indirectly they are demanding in which case you see that there is direct proportionality because if the graph is a straight line that means there is a direct proportionality between the two quantities plotted. So this side you have delta L and this side you have to decide. Now the governing equation for this particular question will be the expression for Young's modulus of elasticity which you have f upon area multiplied by delta L upon L this way. This is you are calling a stress upon strain. Now see as they have given to you that the volume is constant and in the option you find that only L uh, are appearing, the uh, area is not appearing. That means I must eliminate this area. So for that matter what I do, I multiply it by L here and another L here. So now this area into L that becomes volume that is a constant and upper side you get L square. So effectively you see something is constant and on the numerator you have L square, on the numerator you have L square and in the denominator you have delta L. So delta L is coming out to be directly proportional to L square. So if you plot a graph between delta L and L square, then only it will be a straight line. So I have to look for an option in which delta L must be directly proportional to L square. So most appropriate answer will be option number 2 for this question number 13. You understand? So now let us discuss the next question that is question number 14. Now in this uh, question number 14 as it reads, a certain number of spherical drops of a liquid of radius r coalesce to form a single drop of radius capital R and volume V. If T is the surface tension, so obvious this is a question of mechanical properties of fluids, T is the surface tension of the liquid then they have given you in the options whether energy is released or absorbed and their values. Remember that in case the drop is becoming bigger after the formation of you can say merging of a lot of uh, small drops which they have written the word coalesce. Coalesce means they are clubbing together. Then energy is released. So the option where it is written it is absorbed or that means second option, fourth option they are not correct. The obvious idea is that energy means surface tension multiplied by change in surface area. Now you see, surface tension is T that has been given to you and the area is what? Area is basically 3 times volume upon radius. So initial area, this will be 3V upon small radius and final area is 3V upon capital radius. Understand? So this is the energy that will be liberated, that will be released. So you have to look for the option. You can see this is the option which is matching here. This is the initial area minus final area multiplied by surface tension 
this much amount of energy will be released for that matter the most correct option will be option number 3 for question number 14 now let us discuss the next question that is question number 15 now in this uh, question number 15 as it reads steam at 100 degrees celsius is passed into 20 gram of water at 10 degrees celsius obviously this is a question of calorimetry in which you have to make the heat balance when water acquires a temperature of 80 degrees celsius the water is acquiring heat and of course steam is losing it the mass of water present will be so in this particular question you see the data which has been given to you they are very standard ones they have given you the specific heat of water and heat is being gained by water initially you see 20 gram of water is there multiplied by 1 calorie per gram per degree celsius and the temperature of water is rising from 10 degree celsius to 80 degree celsius as it has been given to you in the question so naturally 80 minus 10 this is the gain this is the total amount of heat gain in water and this is being passed by steam let us suppose x gram steam has been used so first steam will be losing its latent heat and then once it has become water so from water at 100 degree celsius it will be coming down to 80 degree celsius if you solve this thing then you see the value of x will come out to be 2.5 gram so this is the amount of steam you have used but finally this will become water at 80 degree celsius and it will be adding on to this 20 gram so total amount of water present at 80 degree celsius will be the sum of these two 20 gram plus 2.5 gram so in total 22.5 gram water will be present at 80 degrees celsius and that is the answer of the question required in this so that was the explanation to question number 15 now let us look at the next question that is question number 16 